The Pope's schedule was jam-packed as he connected with our nation's top politicians, world leaders, and millions of the Catholic faithful. From the moment Pope Francis arrived in the United States, he captured the attention of our nation. He was greeted at Joint Base Andrews by President Obama and Vice President Biden and their families, and then motorcaded to the White House, not in the usual limousine or SUV, but in a fiat. The official welcoming ceremony took place at the White House the morning after the Pope arrived. Mr. President, I am deeply grateful for your welcome in the name of the all Americans. As the son of an immigrant family, I am happy to be a guest in this country which was largely built by such families. Among his activities in D.C., Pope Francis celebrated the mass of canonization of Junipero Serra outside the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception. The next morning, the Pope addressed the joint meeting of the U.S. Congress. He got down to the basics, even quoting the Golden Rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. At Resurrection College Prep High School on Chicago's northwest side, more than 600 students and faculty members packed the gymnasium to watch the Pope's address. Following the Pope's speech, faculty members offered perspective on both the historic and spiritual aspects of the Pope's comments. It was an extremely well-crafted speech. I know before the speech was given, there was some concern that uh, Pope Francis was going to come in and chastise Congress. And instead, he has a call for action and a call for responsibility of our elected officials. It's almost like our government is keeping the problems for the young people. They're not touching on it themselves, and it's almost like we're going to have to deal with it. And I think he touched on that a little bit. It was the first time that he came to Congress to address Congress. So I thought he made a lot of important points. And since I'm not Catholic, I still felt like his points um, could apply to everybody. And he even mentioned that like all humans deserve dignity, respect, and opportunity. And if we want that for ourselves, we should be able to provide that for other people. And if we all have the opportunity to give that to other people and make a difference and help for the common good. He spoke as I expected, kind of as a as a pastor. I didn't expect him to come and give a, a theological treatise. I expected that he would be speaking to the members of Congress in their role as, as lawmakers. And he, he related everything that he said to that responsibility as lawmakers and even uh, referred to Moses, the great lawgiver. So uh, I thought it was very applicable to his audience. Another speech that the Pope delivered, one that was heard quite literally around the world, was his address to the United Nations General Assembly. The Pope pleaded with world leaders to keep the dignity of human life at the center of their concerns. While in New York, the Pope also took part in a multi-religious service at the 9-11 Memorial and Museum. Bring your peace to our violent world. Peace in the hearts of all men and women and peace among the nations of the earth. The Pope wrapped up his stay in New York City by celebrating Mass at the iconic Madison Square Garden. The final city on the Pope's itinerary was Philadelphia, that's where he took part in the World Meeting of Families and celebrated Mass on Benjamin Franklin Parkway. In the Chicago area, about 500 people gathered at Standard Bank Stadium in Crestwood for a family event that coincided with the World Meeting of Families. Members of Incarnation Parish in Palos Heights teamed up with the village of Crestwood for the outdoor celebration that included family games, softball, and watching the Pope celebrate Mass on the Jumbotron. For those who actually attended the World Meeting of Families in Philadelphia, it was a gathering they will never forget. Well, it was, it was wonderful. The thing that, that really amazed me was the joy that everybody had and how much patience people had. There were so many people there. For instance, on Sunday to go to the Mass, we had to wait over two hours just to get through security to get on, onto the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. People were so patient, singing songs, 
you know. And then at the end, when we were leaving to go back to our bus and to get on um, the subway, it was spontaneous song broke out. People had guitars and drums and they were just so excited. And, and I don't think any event you would go to, like maybe if you were leaving the football game or something, you're not gonna see people that are just, okay, we're in the crowd. It was, it was the Francis effect, definitely. It was just outstanding. It was a wonderful opportunity to be with so many Catholics from around the world, to see the universality of the Catholic Church, uh, to hear what the issues are facing uh, families and marriage around the world, and comparing that to what we have here in Chicago. Uh, so it was a, a wonderful time to be together with so many other Catholics. It was, it was awesome. I mean, we had, you could feel the blessings um, and then just having everybody around, you know, I think watching everybody else's reaction was something. Um, just trying to get a picture. I mean, I'm a short person holding my phone up and trying to be above people. Everybody, I kind of got pictures of phones, you know, as he's driving by and then people were climbing in trees. And there was a guy that climbed up on a pole. It was like Zacchaeus here in our, our 21st century, you know, on the pole because they wanted to be able to see the Holy Father. There was such enthusiasm, such excitement. We did have the opportunity to have the Pope go by us uh, in the Pope Mobile, and just to feel the energy and the love for uh, this great leader of the Catholic Church was an amazing thing. Wonderful reaction from those who were able to get a glimpse of Pope Francis.